speakers, professor, Ellis Ganesh sir, to address the gathering and interact with our students. So let me begin with the Tamil greeting. So, Banakam. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, relatively more uh, a wider greeting. Namaste. <laughs> I hope you agree. Namaste is wider. And of course, uh, a very good morning and a happy morning to all of you. Okay. So, Principal Balan, uh, my dear fellow teachers and uh, students and uh, I think there are no other uh, sets of people here. I'm, I'm very honored to be with all of you here. Uh, uh, it's definitely a very joyous moment for me. It's always joyous to be with young people. That's one of the reasons I chose to be a teacher because you always are with young people. Okay? And you don't see the same faces uh, every year. They change and it's, it's wonderful. Uh, to have, have gone through that experience. So when uh, when your principal had requested me to uh, be with you, I was very happy. At the earlier date, there was a problem. I had to change it. I had to travel somewhere and come back. I do travel a lot and talk to students and teachers across the country and uh, have learned some lessons from all of that. I'm happy that you are going through the Science Expo, but there are some uh, aspects of science as well as the purpose of science which I believe uh, will be useful if you know of them. It will be useful to you if you get to know about these aspects. The first point is you must know a little about the general aspects of our country so that you also are able to think about science with the national purpose. Okay. Here you must understand the difference between science, engineering and technology. They are related. Your expo is a science expo, but you have to begin to know the difference between science, engineering and technology. There was a nice briefing given by the two young ladies when they talked about Episteem 2017 and uh, where they mentioned about science, computer science, mathematics and so on. Okay. Can any friend here share his or her ideas of what is science? Anybody? What do you think is science? Come on, you are talking to a friend. Talk like, as though you are talking to a friend. Okay. Forget the professor part, you know. Yeah. <laughs> A practical way of learning. Okay, fine. Any other answers? Science is day-to-day life. Day life. Are are you suggesting that there is no difference between living and science? Ah, connected to science. So uh, think about it. Your direction of thought is correct. You need more precision in your expression. <laughs> Because when you say science is day-to-day -day life, that means we are not differentiating between living and science. But later you correct it by saying it's connected to living. That's correct, certainly. But what is science? What do you think is science? Yeah, please. It's all right. Come on, all of us have different views. Innovations. Huh? Innovations, projects. Is science innovations? Science innovations and projects. No, is science itself, uh, does it consist of innovations? Okay. Okay. I'll have to clarify on that. Anybody else? Pardon? Knowing about your surroundings. Okay. Um, let us take uh, that for example. Would you, uh, young lady, accept that knowing about yourself is also science? So that means you're going beyond surroundings also, isn't it? But you're right. I mean, you're certainly right. Okay. But you have to become holistic. Let me tell you first, uh, would you agree if I tell you that science consists of knowledge? Is that acceptable? Science consists of knowledge, reflects knowledge, embodies knowledge. Correct? Is that fair enough? Now we can all ask a question, knowledge about what? Alright, science 
embodies knowledge, contains knowledge, reflects knowledge, manifests knowledge, all that is fine. But knowledge about what? Some of you have given answers, you know, about living and the surroundings and day-to-day -day work and there was somebody who said that here also, I just missed it. One of you had mentioned something in the beginning. No? Practical way of learning, yeah, correct, all that. See, the world around us uh, consists of physical things and conceptual things. Conceptual means things that exist in our mind but may not have a physical existence. Let me give you an example. The fruit basket, the water bottle, the mic, me, you, your pen, your shirt, your ring, the chair, fan, the camera, all of them are physical objects, correct? You can see, feel, touch them. Correct? Conceptual objects, that objects are things that exist in our mind. Okay. Can you give me an example of something that exists in your mind but doesn't exist physically? Air is also physical. Yeah. Uh, knowledge is very good. Uh, creativity, very good. Uh, talent, very good. Ideas, I mean you are all on the same thing. Now, I was trying, yeah, very good, you are you're right, you are certainly correct. I am talking of something, uh, something slightly different. Suppose I tell you mathematics. Does mathematics have a physical existence? No, sir. Okay. But do you agree mathematics can be put into a physical thing called a book? <laughs> correct? I can represent mathematics using a physical object called the book or notes or whatever it is. Correct? Would you say Tamil language, is it physical or conceptual? Conceptual. So just like physical objects have boundaries, this mic has a boundary, the fruit basket has a boundary, okay? Conceptual objects or things also have a boundary. The boundary is in our mind. For example, would you say I am speaking in Tamil? No. Because your mind is able to understand that I am speaking to you in a language which you will not term Tamil. Obviously, I am speaking in English and you know in your mind that there is a difference between Tamil and English. And you know to differentiate between Tamil and English, so which is evidence that you have the boundary in your mind. I hope you got it. Correct? Now, all physical objects, all physical objects and all conceptual objects are characterized or they possess uniquely what we can call as attributes or properties or characteristics or traits, etc. Okay? For example, the fruit basket there, it's a physical object. It can be characterized. For example, I can say it has a round base. Isn't it? And it has a cut cone structure. If you want to mathematically model it, it will have a cut cone structure. Isn't it? And I can say the, the water bottle here has a cylindrical structure, has serrated surface and so on. Okay? I characterize this. It is, I can characterize this optically. It is transparent. This is not transparent. I can't see through it. This is transparent. Isn't it? I can go on like that, isn't it? My body is not transparent. So the things like shape, color, texture, optical properties, opaqueness, transparency, etc. are properties of the physical objects. Correct? They, they describe the physical objects. In fact, I, I would like you to also understand how we use our perception and understand the difference between two physical objects. Okay? For example, just come here young man. For a minute can you come here? Just come here, nothing. Yeah. Young lady, can you come here for a minute? Now, say, can, obviously all of us can make out the difference between these two young people. Okay? For now we use
use neutral terms, very neutral terms. We will call both of them as human entities. It's a neutral term. What are the differences that you perceive? What are the characteristics of this human entity? What are the characteristics of this human entity which makes you say they are different? I'm making is you are drawing, you are using your senses, in this case sight, and you're able to distinguish between physical objects. Okay? You're able to distinguish between physical objects and characterize them. For example, even if I brought four boys here, you will still be able to differentiate between them on very fine aspects, which you didn't think of. Can I have four people here? Just come. Just for you to understand how, what happens. Now, things like height, skin color, you know, curve, etc., are common because you can see that. Okay, but there is something more which you are doing to distinguish them. For example, why would you say this young man's face is different from this young man's face? Yeah. What are the characteristics of the face? Yes, no, no. Yeah. What are the what are the characteristics of the face? that make you say that he is different from me. You know what happens? What? No, no, no problems at all. I want you to learn a very nice lesson that happened in the last few seconds. That is what you call as individual sense collective nonsense. <laughs> Individually you are talking sense. But when all of you talk without integration, the net result is nonsense. I understand. Be very careful about this. Because we must always see to it that individual sense, collective sense happens. I hope you agree. Okay, this is an important lesson for you. Even when you play football or cricket or basketball or hockey or throw ball or cocoa, whatever it is. It should not be a case of individually competent and collectively mediocre. I hope you agree. You know, happen, that should not happen to your team, no? You shouldn't say I have a team of great players, but I put them together, it becomes a lousy team. No, that's not a Okay, do you agree? If you ask your mind deeply, you are able to distinguish between the shape of the eye, the eyeball to eyeball center distance, the nose to ear distance. Actually, your 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 intelligence, your mind is already doing all those calculations vigorously. Sit down, please. You're already doing all those calculations vigorously. It's just that you're not very conscious of the calculations that you're doing. You're not conscious. You're, you're doing it. So you're able to differentiate. He is different from him on various counts. Right? So obviously, when we talk of science, we are first using our senses. We are trying to perceive the world around us, surroundings, as was correctly said, or ourselves. You're trying to perceive. You're trying to characterize. So we have what is there in the world? Physical and conceptual entities or things. Each one of them is different because of its properties, characteristics, traits, etc. Are these properties, characteristics constant or are they vary? They vary across entities. And even for the same entity, they vary across time. I hope you agree. It's a simple example. Suppose now I'll go to a, a quantity which you may not, not be able to perceive directly. This one you all saw, you heard whatever, you can differentiate. If I ask all the four of them to talk, you'll differentiate the voice, you know, so hearing, you know, so many things. We use our basic senses, sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste, etc. Okay? But that's direct. But suppose I ask you the question, 
Can you tell me what's the blood pressure of these four young men? Would you be able to perceive that just by your senses? You cannot. You cannot. So what would you need to observe the blood pressure of these four youngsters? You need the blood pressure gauge, correct? You have seen doctors using the blood pressure gauge, correct? So I take the blood pressure and incidentally blood pressure varies uh, depending on what position you take, which time of the day, etc., what you eat, etc., etc. It's dynamic, daily basis. In fact, minute by minute basis. If you actually connect a very precise blood pressure instrument and have it put, uh, have the digitized version, put the blood pressure, you'll see the pressure varying second by second. Our own body. Correct? But now, you couldn't do it with your basic senses. None of us can do that. So what did you need for this? What did you need in order to look at this attribute, blood pressure? You need technology. The technology is the blood pressure gauge, the monitor. Correct? Suppose I fracture my hand. You know, can I see the nature of the fracture by my plain sight? You can't. What do I need to see the fracture? You need the x-ray. Isn't it? So like that, many things happen. For example, uh, you know, babies, before they are born, you know, parents are very eager to find out what is the health of the baby. You know, I'm sure even in your homes, you'll have people who are, who are going to have babies. So wonderful thing. Life is being created. So what do they do? They go to the doctor. You have ultrasound, isn't it? And then they show the pictures of the baby in the womb of the mother, the fetus. Isn't it? The baby is growing. And the doctor says, look, the baby is in right position, baby is healthy, mother and baby are healthy, and you're very happy. So you needed the technology to see the condition of the baby. Isn't it? Okay. Third, I'm going to ask you something. So you've got two modes of perception now. What are the two modes? Direct sensory perception, where you use your senses and perceive directly. And you make your observations you draw your conclusions, everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second is technology enhanced sensory perception. Blood pressure monitor, x-ray, uh, ultrasound, etc. Isn't it? And you know, we even have things like, uh, suppose I want to find out my, uh, the condition of my heart. You put the electrocardiograph, ECG. So they'll strap up, they'll put the jelly on you. You can check that. And they'll put all the probes, the sensors, and they'll connect you to the machine and then you get the plot of your heartbeat. You can check this. You can ask, you can go back home and ask your, somebody at home to show an ECG. They'll show you the pattern and the doctor diagnoses based on the ECG. This is the condition of your heart. You have a healthy heart. Or they say this valve is weak in your heart and so on. Your heart is pumping at this efficiency and so on. Which is very important for our health. Correct? So technology enhanced sensory perception. I am going to ask you a, a question. Will it rain this evening? The May is a diplomatic answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's okay. Now, what do you think? What do you think? No, okay, I'll ask you something. Uh, instead of May, uh, sir, dead sure, very sure, quite sure. Well, may, may be not. <laughs> okay. So, low probability, sir. Very low probability. No chance. What will be your ratings? How many of you feel you'll raise your hands if I say no chance of rain today in the evening in Chennai? And Perambur, okay, <laughs> to be more precise. Okay, I'm just doing a statistical count. Huh? I'm just doing a statistical count. Okay. Now, watch, watch this very carefully. Please make this observation and store it. Now I say, okay, put it down. Same people should not answer, okay? Now, others who have not answered, it will rain, but uh, low probability, sir. How many of you? Okay, good. Hey, I, I hope this is almost finishing the audience here. Okay. Okay, now I will go to the other end. How many of you would say, damn sure it will rain today, sir? You see, we have four or five. No, it's okay. We have four or five. We have four or five who feel. Okay, now let's let's ask one of the respondents. I think there's a teacher here. A teacher, what makes you say you're very sure that it will rain today? I read in the newspaper that it will rain. Good, good. 
So the teacher here says, uh, what's your name, ma'am? Rupa. Huh? Rupa. Yeah, Rupa ma'am says, sir, I've already have the information with me. The newspaper in the morning has said that it will rain. So basic, based on that. Let me ask some of the others who said dead sure, who don't have that information. Why did you say it will rain? Somebody, anybody who, who says damn sure. What makes you say it will rain? So you observe the clouds and say, are you understanding? So there are many, uh, I hope you got it, but you drew your conclusion on something. Okay, let me ask a different question, a slightly different question. Okay, uh, you have uh, siblings, brother or sister at home? Uh, can you describe elder sister, elder brother, younger brother, younger sister? Huh? No, 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 the composition. So only two children for your parents, you and your younger sister. Okay, come. Where is your younger sister studying? Same school? She's here. In the second standard. In the second standard. Okay, fine. Listen carefully. Sit down. Okay. Second standard. Uh, is she a very mischievous person or a very sedate person? Very quiet. Huh? Very mischievous person. Okay. It's all right. I was also very mischievous when I was young. <laughs> sit down. Okay. No problem. Sit down and talk. Okay, sit down. We'll just converse. I'm just trying to enable you to understand something which goes beyond. Okay. What do you think she is doing right now? She's ready for explanation. Huh? No, what do you think? She, her condition. What do you think she is doing now? Reading for explanations. Reading for explanations. Okay. Can you... If you know your younger sister very well, can you tell me what thoughts are crossing her mind right now? <laughs> Come on, you, it's your younger sister. I, this is a question for anybody here. It just happens that I'm conversing with you, that's all. I'm just conversing with you, that's all. Anybody can answer. You may have a younger brother or a younger sister or older sister. Same question applies. Can you guess? Can you guess what, uh, what thoughts are going on in her right now? Take a guess, ma. I mean, Antalog Teria da one sister. She's afraid of guess how I will explain and how Oh, you feel she is she's trying to do risk management now. Correct? Okay. Sir, can we reach her sister? Cheers. Huh? Can you? No, no, please sit down. No, there is a reason. I'm going to I'm going to transfer a very nice lesson to you. That is why. You will learn a lot from what I'm going to. Two years. Okay, sit down. I show you. Ella para ella okar. Unga pair na ma? Danshi. Danshi okar ma. I mean, please sit down. See, Danshi is an example. I could have asked that of any one of you. Okay. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. This is an experiment for all of you. I need not know the answer. Right now, make a note if you can of what you think your mother is thinking right now. Right now. She's not with you. Okay. Listen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know you're getting excited. Okay. I know you're getting excited. But listen carefully. Listen carefully. I know you're getting excited. I'm happy. But do you understand the weight of the question that I asked? The question is, are you, use, are you observing your mother using your senses right now? No. Are you observing your mother through any technology right now? No. But yet you are able to give an answer or have an answer. Why? That's because you also perceive the world around you and yourself not only through your senses, not only through technology, but there's another important what do you say? Capability that all of us have, everybody has, which is called intuition. So when Danshri was answering my question, she was attempting to use her, her intuition. I hope you agree, Danshri. So you're not seeing your sister. There's no technology. But because of the relationship with your sister, there may not be any logic to what you said. You may not be able to provide a reasoning. But you are confident of your answer. Correct? 
This is called intuition. Intuition comes through built experiences. So you have a very good lesson now. The beginnings of science and our observations of ourselves in the world starts with sensory perception, technology enhanced sensory perception or intuition. Or intuition. Okay? Yeah, the, the young lady is there. Ask her what she was thinking. If she will respond, just go and ask her quietly. Then she. Just ask her quietly and she will tell you truthfully. Nobody needs to hear. <laughs> no, let her answer, then she. It's okay. Very nice, beautiful child. Yeah. Illa venda venda. Avle kekito. How certain then she is going to report. Inna nanchinda chulla. Puran yenumsham munadi. Thanks a lot. Then say, you see, you are not off the mark. You may not have been precise, but you are not off the mark. Are you understanding? You know, I must congratulate you. You have understood your younger sister. <laughs> okay. See? See, I can ask the same question. You could have asked the same question of me. Come on, Professor LSG, can you tell me what your wife is thinking right now? Now, I'll use my intuitional answer. I'll tell you, she's now working on Varalakshmi Puja today. Okay. So, I now, why did I answer? I'm not seeing her. I'm not using my senses. No technology. But that's because of our familiarity with the person, our observations, instinct. Sometimes I want you to understand, you can use intuition even well beyond your domains of social relationships. Or do you understand? Instinctively, you can you can talk of certain things. You, something inside you, something got into your head and puts a switch on and you say, aha, this is going to happen. But you can't explain. There's no reason. And it may happen. There's no guarantee, but it may happen. So intuition is another way. What do we do with these perceptions? I told you, we identify these physical and conceptual entities. We characterize them with their attributes, static and dynamic. And not only that, I hope all of you agree, these entities relate to each other. They relate to each other with their attributes. Isn't it? So right now I am trying to relate to you with my voice as my attribute. And you are relating to me with your hearing as your attribute. Isn't it? And this happens statically and dynamically. So science is knowledge. And we do all this through three modes of perception. What are the three? Sensory. Direct sensory perception, technology enhanced sensory perception and intuition. Correct. Correct. And science is knowledge. Knowledge of what? Science is knowledge of entities in our universe. Their attributes, characteristics, static and dynamic. And their relationships, static and dynamic. Which you codify as laws, theories, etc., etc. Correct? So science is codified knowledge. Represented knowledge, which is common to everybody. That's why we say it's science. Okay? So one of the advantages of science is, because of our study of physical entities, conceptual entities, etc., including using mathematics, we are able to characterize entities correctly, codify their status, and also, very importantly, if you are very good in science, you are able to predict the behavior of entities under certain conditions. Please pay attention to this last point. We are able to predict what, how certain entities will behave. Correct? So you've got the idea of science now? So science is knowledge. Knowledge about what? Physical entities and conceptual entities. Their attributes, static and dynamic. Their relationship, static and dynamic. 
their behavior, static and dynamic, predictions, etc. Of course, we use this knowledge of science for our benefit, to make our lives healthy, comfortable, and so on. Isn't it? Safe, secure, etc. That's what we do. That's what we practice science for. After all, you use science, you go to the doctor, doctor asks you how, what kind of vaitavali are you having? And then you say, you say, no, the doctor will ask you, is it burning pain? Is it pressing pain? Is it piercing pain? Because they know what it is. Because kutravalina, the diagnosis will be probably gaseous problem. Yeriravalina may be acidity. Isn't it? So when they want to prescribe, after all, you want to be comfortable. Vaitavali vanangartan than a doctor ke poor on the man. the doctor can the knowledge, nam, we share our condition, our status, attributes. Pain in the stomach is an attribute. So doctor has what type of pain? And then we, we go and say, in the Madri Valley, doctor, Abdina, then he hears and understands you and prescribes a medicine. Hopefully, you're all right. Isn't it? So, doctor is practicing science. The doctor is able to predict if these are the conditions, most probably this is the cause. And therefore, to take care of that cause, we need to give these medicines. Isn't it? Suppose you go to the doctor, doctor, I have high fever, lot of vomiting, joints, lalam, valikar, Abdina. Then doctors start zeroing in and they may do some blood tests also and say, no, no, this is malaria. Malarial parasite, terrier, the binocular lapata. And they are able to then diagnose and give you treatment. Isn't it? That's what happens normally. Okay. It's not just a raw diagnosis. They do use science. They do use, uh, uh, sorry, microscopes. They do use the microscope and look in the microscope, microscope and see, I'm sorry, I said binocular wrongly. They use a microscope and say, this is what's going to happen. Isn't it? So that is the point. And generally they are right because you are looking at patterns of behavior, which you are codified. I am going to take you through another important point. Let me take this chair. Okay, I will take this chair. Hello, can you balance it? You can please. Okay, I will take this chair. I am going to put it down here. Okay. I am just going to try to tell you where we have to go a little beyond science using the principles of science. Definitely. Okay. All of you will understand what I am going to do. I am going to conduct a very small experiment. Okay. Now I am going to kick the chair. Suppose I kick this chair. All of you have enough knowledge of physics. Do you agree if I give you data on the mass distribution of the chair? the center of mass of the chair, the friction between the chair and the ground, the composition of the chair, material, whatever it is, and my kick vector, my force with which I kick and the direction with which I kick. Do you agree using the laws of physics, I can predict the behavior of the chair? Yes. yes. I'm just giving a simple example. Obviously, you're right. In fact, if I know the laws of physics correctly, I must be able to predict the behavior of the chair quite accurately. Are you understanding? But now, suppose, I, what is your name, young man? Savesh, huh? okay. See, suppose I kick Savesh <laughs> instead of the chair. Instead of the chair, I kick Savesh. Do you think I can predict Savesh's behavior? I can listen to Savarish. Okay, Savarish. I hope all of you agree that we will not be able to predict Savarish's behavior. Are you understand? Do you agree for the same, I, the physics will hold good. There's no problem. Action, reaction, blah, blah, everything will hold good. But can I predict Savarish's behavior? I can't. Now this is very, very important because now you are looking at science in a slightly different way. There is great variability in the behavior of a human system when there is a stimulus given. See, the kick I give the chair is a stimulus to the chair. And I can predict the response of the chair and its behavior using the laws of physics. The 
point all of us must understand is when i kick not a chair but a human intelligent live human entity i can predict the physics of the behavior but not the human behavior why because the variability of behavior starts increasing in fact you can just imagine do you really believe if i kick everybody in the front row everybody will give me the same response no so this but do you agree whatever the number of chairs if they are similar for the same kick they will all give the same same response physics but human beings are not like that they will give different response and the same person if kick 10 times will give 20 different response <laughs> yeah for example first sabarish may think okay big professor has kicked me what do i do you know he will keep quiet second time i kick him he may look okay okay third time he may try to prevent me from kicking fourth time he will catch me nada <laughs> I think my point is made. You have understood what I said. I think all of you have understood the the point is we are not dealing with only physics now. I hope you got it. We are not dealing with only physics because human behavior goes beyond physics. Elia, see, you guys are saying, "Sir, there are four months only are coming. Sir, there are COVID cases are coming." Are you understanding? Because our our psychology is like that. we all have different psychology our genetic structure is different our nurture environment is different our families are different our communities and neighborhoods are different and all of us are learning intelligent people isn't it we are all very intelligent people okay so we all learn but the beauty of science is the principles of science observation patterning in the mind building mental models making hypotheses as were made by your statistical analytic analysis here making hypothesis collecting data organizing the data seeking patterns etc checking with your hypotheses all these are also the practice of science except that you are dealing with a highly variable environment very highly variable environment so when you talk of human beings and understanding their behavior it's very important for us to be very careful of the kind of observations we make chair on the straight forward fan is also a straight forward human being is not that straight forward so you have to make all those observations see patterns because the better you observe and form patterns the better you know the person and the better you know the person the better the relationship you can have with the person you know after all all of us want peaceful constructive happy relationships so you have to find out eppo pesina we can talk sense to each other at what moment should we avoid talking to each other all these things you must understand as young people that's also science are you understand now engineering is the actions we perform using energy and using the knowledge of science to create things i hope you got it so science is knowledge engineering is action expenditure of energy so suppose i want i, I i'll just put this once take this example okay i want the over in the text padikana na i can't see it with nice because normally for most human beings by the time you hit 40 45 this biopia ngra i limitation vandrum சாதாரண மனுஷாளுக்கு வருது நாற்பது நாற்பத்தஞ்சு வயசில் வெள்ளை எழுத்து அப்படிம்பாங்க தமிழ் இந்த தமிழ் விதேசே வெள்ளை எழுத்து ப்ரெஸ் ப்ரெஸ் பயோபியா இஸ் த திங் ப்ரெஸ் பயோ மீன்ஸ் யூ நீட் ரீடிங் கிளாஸஸ் யூ கான் ரீட் நேச்சுரலி டேக்ஸ் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபைவ் நார்மலி இட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் டு மோஸ்ட் பீப்புள் சம் பீப்புள் கேன் எஸ்கேப் தட் எனக்கு அது மாதிரி நாற்பத்தஞ்சு வயசில் எனக்கு ஆச்சு அது மாதிரி ப்ரெஸ் பயோபியா வந்தது ஓகே நான் இருக்கட்டேன் பரவாயில்ல விட்டுருங்க சபரி சாரி சோல்ட் ஐ வில் டேக் இட் பேக் நோ ஒன் okay 40 45 you get that now do you agree here i have my spectacles 
the spectacles is a physical object. Do you agree the science of optics has gone behind the engineering of the lenses? Correct? I have to make the lens. No? The grinding is correct. Concave, convex. That's accurate. That's not a For my eye, somebody will do the... And somebody has to measure what's my refractive index. Then I'll tell you, in the glass, you go to uh, an ophthalmologist, they'll tell you this is what you have to do. So obviously, somebody has to engineer this. So, the science of optics, lenses, etc. is in this object, embodied in this object. The action of engineering to make the lens, to make the frame, etc. is also there. And here I have the technology called spectacles. So, technology is a thing, is a physical thing embodied with the knowledge of science and the action of engineering. Have you understood this? I hope all of you are clear about what is science, what is engineering, what is technology. Science is knowledge. knowledge. Engineering is Action. and technology is Water. things, things, physical things. Technology is physical things, but they are not any physical thing. What is it special about these physical things? They are embedded with the knowledge of science. They contain the knowledge of science and the action of engineering. This is something that you must understand. Okay, so with that understanding, get into your science fair, which your school has done. Try to appreciate what different people have done. What have the other children observed? What have they logged in or recorded? In fact, one of the exciting things that all of you should try to do, should try to do is make predictions based on your knowledge of science. Make predictions. This is what is going to happen. And your predictions will be very good if your knowledge of science is very good. And you have captured your knowledge correctly. I hope you got this idea. And I think uh, you will have a very great time. I am very happy, Principal Sir, to have been here with all your, your, your students here. I hope I was useful to you this morning. Okay? And uh, I wish you all the very best. God bless you. Thank you very much.